This is the Washington DC metropolitan area, a 4,000 square mile sector covering two states, 15 counties, the US capital, and all three branches of the federal government. And this railway system is the Metro Rail, a dense collection of public transit networks with six rail lines servicing over 5.4 million people. Altogether, the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit System covers DC, Virginia, and Maryland, providing transit service through 91 stations, 50 bus loops, 117 track miles, and 54 parking facilities. It's the third busiest heavy rail rapid transit system in the United States, with 93 million passenger trips in 2022. Then there's the Metro Bus, operating over 1,500 buses on 325 routes. If you're wondering what makes this all so special, let me explain. Washington area's public transport is a big deal because of three words. Transit-oriented development. Basically, this means that instead of building homes, relaxation spots, schools, and offices around roads, highways, and parking lots, you build these settlements around the city's public transport. Along the DC regional railways, you'll find everything you need in a mixed-use system that links a public transit facility less than half a mile from a residential, retail, or work area. This means commuters can hop off the metro and take a short walk or bike ride to their next destination. Thanks to this seemingly simple system, 15% of the area's workforce commute using the metro. And while that sounds like a small number when compared to areas with fantastic infrastructure design like New York, Singapore or Japan, it's much higher than the rest of the country. Across the US, on average, only 5% of work commuters use public transport. And this gets worse too. Only 2% of trips overall are taken on public transit. It's a story displayed well in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. These two cities use the DFW Metroplex, and they only have 161 bus routes, four light rail systems, and three rail lines servicing 6.5 million people, despite being over twice the size of the Washington metro area. The Washington metro system is so rare that it's one of only four cities where public transit users earn more money than drivers. So how did the Washington area get so ahead? Well, it's a combination of lucky location and decades of consistent planning and community involvement. To break down how this region earned its status as one of the best transit systems in the country, let's head across the Potomac, back to the 1960s, to the small county of Arlington, Virginia, which is quite possibly the best example of transit-oriented development in the region. It all started with a plan to revolutionize the way America looks at public transport and housing at a time when the automobile was emerging as king. While most parts of America fully embraced the auto boom and all that came with it, Arlington city planners, real estate developers, and citizens saw an opportunity. Because of their closeness to the nation's capital, federal workers needed homes as the population boom led to families moving to DC and its surrounding areas. They'd also need office spaces, and Arlington County was soon building hundreds of structures to facilitate this. City planners and residents wanted the population, but didn't want the rapid urbanization, wide roads, and parking garages messing up their charming, traditional county layout. So the community came together to create this, the bullseye approach. See the red clusters? They represent a plan to line up the highest density places like offices, shops, schools, green spaces, and homes within walking distance of a new rail system. This would instantly provide affordable transport to thousands while encouraging less congestion from car use, minimizing traffic, lowering gas bills, doing away with huge parking garages and parking fees, and creating more affordable living for families. There was just one problem though. The original railway plan was meant to run along Interstate 66 here, cutting off connectivity to thriving communities like Ballston. So after some tough lobbying, the team successfully rerouted the railway to follow this line here, now known as the Roslyn Ballston Corridor an underground rail line connecting Roslyn, Clarendon, Courthouse, Virginia Square, and Ballston. This became part of the Orange Line, which passed through the DC Metro Center and extended to Maryland. Today, each station had a distinct characteristic. For example, Virginia Square has clusters of educational centers, while Roslyn is a business hub. There are seven mixed-service, fully walkable, cyclable urban villages along the Metro Transit. And the development of the Roslyn Balston Corridor has led to an unbelievable 47,000 residential units, 6 million square feet dedicated to retail, and 36 million square feet of workspaces. On top of that, 45% of trips from Arlington to DC are made via transit, and 22% of Arlington households don't even have a car, contributing to the 16% of those who don't own cars across the entire metro region. In fact, in Arlington, only 40% of trips are made with only a car, and 16% of all trips are made on foot. This transit-oriented development has even led to Arlington and the greater DC area avoiding the roughest parts of the national housing crisis. This is done by building apartment complexes around these transit systems. 
When the region builds these apartments, it's for the purpose of residents buying them because they're cheaper than single-family homes. And then they use this revenue to pour back into the budget and start the process all over again. It's been happening for around 50 years, which balances costs in the area against the price rises that competing for housing brings. When we zoom back out towards the entire metro region, the DC intracity secondary transport shines with 85 bike lanes and 5,200 dockless bikes and scooters to supplement bus routes. This explains why around two-thirds of DC houses are car-free. And with incentives like the DC Streetcar, a free transport service catering to over 90,000 people monthly, public transport is one of the most attractive elements of the city. Okay, so now you might be wondering why this isn't the case all over the United States. After all, if Arlington could do it during the auto boom, what's stopping everyone else? Well, it's not as easy as copy and paste. Just look at the Columbus, Ohio metropolitan area. Columbus's central region has 11 counties and a service area of 1.2 million people. It's one of the fastest growing metro areas in the Midwest and its population is set to expand to 3.15 million by 2050. With an area of 3,170 square miles, the Columbus Metro is around 2.3 square miles smaller than the DC Metro area. And it's the second largest US metropolitan area without a subway system or a high-speed rail service. Yeah, there's no passenger rail systems within central Ohio. There isn't even a streetcar. Instead, those who use public transport rely on buses, facilitating 18 million rides annually over 44 routes with a fleet of around 440 buses. It works for now, but as essential bus services like the free downtown bus circulator are being closed down, residents have even fewer options. Columbus is still waiting for two Amtrak corridors to connect the capital to Cleveland, Dayton and Cincinnati, and one for Cleveland, Toledo and Detroit. While there are plans in place for this, it's estimated that residents will have to wait until 2035 for that to become a reality. So for now, intercity travelers will have to rely on suppliers like Greyhound and Barron's bus. Interestingly enough though, Columbus has one of the best car commuter ratings in the country, with the average driver taking only 24 minutes to get to work. Creating a car-centered system has earned Columbus the title of sixth best car commuter friendly city but neglecting necessary funding allocation for public transport hurts those looking for alternative ways of getting around. When we look back at the DC area, it's the exact opposite, as the proposed new purple line will connect the city even further, creating a close-knit transportation hub that would make this area here its own self-sufficient rail transit system. This light rail will move from Bethesda all the way down to New Carrollton in Prince George County, creating a direct link to the Silver Spring and College Park stations for a seamless transit route from almost anywhere along this 16-mile stretch. Not one to leave their bus routes out, Washington DC also announced in early 2023 that they will be adopting the Zero Fare Metro system. Yep, that means there will no longer be a $2 bus fare. All buses within the city limits will be completely free. As for how this works, well, the money to run these systems comes from the taxpayers. And since it would take an annual $42 million to maintain, not everybody is on board. In fact, the initiative is currently on pause due to funding concerns, but it shows that Washington's motivation is in regard to public transport. Still, this is one of the busiest cities to take up this initiative, and everybody will be watching to see how it goes. As the Washington metro system leaps several steps ahead, the US government is playing catch up with the rest of its states. For now, cities like Washington DC are pushing through with several projects aimed at making surrounding metro rail areas green spaces, with plans to create a zero emissions bus garage within the next five years. So while the metro system is far from perfect, as any DC resident can tell you, with the right leadership and plenty of community input, it will continue to be one of the best integrated public transit systems in the country. And in a nation that has largely ignored public commute systems in favor of the big, bad automobile, that's quite an accomplishment. Thank you for watching.